Hey guys, we are continuing with our um, lawn mower maintenance repair video series. And we've done a whole lot. We've done four videos so far. This will be video number five. So if, you, if you're new to this video, we got four more videos before this one. So check the playlist uh, that this video is attached to. And at the end of the video, you'll see a, a picture and you click that picture of the video and that's gonna take you to the playlist where you can see where we we drained the oil, we changed the front wheels, we changed the front um, frame here, the axle cover they call it, we changed the belt for the transmission, the blade, the blade adapter. So we're doing all types of things to make this machine perform fantastic while we're out there mowing. But what would be a video series for maintenance and repairs on a mower if we didn't get to the meat and potatoes, the engine? And the engine is where most people are going to have their problems. Because even if your self-propulsion is not working, you can still push it as long as it's not too steep of a hill and it's not too much property. Uh, if your wheels are a little bouncy and wiggly, hey, you can still get by as long as your customers aren't too concerned and you're really slow and careful with how you do it. But if the mower won't start, you're going to be out there with a pair of scissors. You know what I'm saying? So what we got to do today is we got to figure out the three elements that makes a mower mow. And that's going to be air, gas, or a fuel source, of course, and spark. Two of those we're going to work on right now. That's going to be air and spark. Sorry about that. Uh, so with that said, here's what we got. A brand new spark plug. Voila. And brand new air cleaner and pre-cleaner. Now, something about the pre-cleaner that I want to talk to everybody about. Back in the day, I'm old enough to say that, we used to soak our pre-cleaners in a light motor oil. Um, and then we would put our pre-cleaners on our air filter element, okay, like this. And the pre-cleaner being a little bit damp in oil, you would wring it out, uh, would better stop the dust from going through your pre-cleaner or going through your air filter. Well, Briggs and Stratton's directions say specifically do not oil the pre-cleaner. Probably because this isn't a K&N filter, this isn't a racing filter, this is a paper filter. So as it's sucking the moisture from the oil through the pre-cleaner and onto the paper element, you almost immediately destroy your filter, uh, the paper element. Once it's wet, it's trash. So you cannot do that. So this is the proper technique for replacing your air filter. And air is very, very important. I'm going to show you something real quick here. Or real quick here. When you take this off, and bring the camera down just a little bit to make sure that we're in the shot completely. When you take off your air cleaner, screw here, right? You lift this cover up. There's bound to be a lot of loose debris in here. You need to be careful before you take your air cleaner off. Keep it held down and make sure you don't have a whole lot of debris here. If you do, uh, a can of compressed air like what you would use for your computer keyboards, uh, a, a, a one inch paintbrush, a cheap, cheap chip brush or something that you can just brush the debris away or blow it away. Whatever you got to do, get the debris off before you lift your element because you don't want all that stuff falling into the hole here. So here is the old element, all right, and pre-cleaner. Now be really careful. Look at that's disgusto. That is just straight up disgusto. So this motor was being starved for air big time. Uh, pretty much running with like the choke on. Um, you hear that? You hear that hawk up there? Um, and that's not good. You're losing a lot of power that way. You're losing a lot of torque and you're losing a lot of uh, the ability when you get into the thick stuff for it to really be able to continue on. So this is trash. And here is the pre-cleaner. 
and that is pretty trashed. So here is the new one. So what a difference, right? I mean, big difference. It's that simple to do. You got this big hole and you got this big hole here. Make sure you don't have no debris and put your, air, your new air cleaner back on. It should be a nice tight fit. There you go. That is how you replace your air cleaner properly on these four-stroke motors like that. Make sure you read the uh, instructions on the back of your air cleaner. If it has a pre-cleaner, make sure you read it. Some might say to lightly oil it. Some might say don't. So pay attention to that, okay? Big, big difference um, between the two types. If you have a paper filter, you're going to ruin your paper filter really, really fast if you start sucking moisture in. That's the whole point of that, all right? So that, that's your air cleaner. So that's air. So that's one huge, huge element to making this motor run in tip-top shape. But to even start, second is going to be spark plug. Let's take a look at that. The spark plug on this particular model, uh, this mower, this is the what they call professional series, which means absolutely nothing to me, 190 cc. Uh, Briggs and Stratton motor. Um, the spark plug on this is located right here and this is very important. All right? I want you guys to pay really really close attention to this. Most machines are going to be this now. OHV. OHV means overhead valve. What's the significance of that? Absolutely nothing to any of us. Unless you're going to go in and start tearing apart the motor and start adjusting valve lashes and stuff like that. That's not what this series is. This is for basic maintenance. So why am I even mentioning OHV? Because when you go to your local lawnmower shop and you say, hey man, I need a spark plug. And they say, well, what's the number? And you go, oh shoot, I don't know. And they say, well, did you reach in there with your phone and take a picture and show me the picture and I can get the number that way? And you go, oh man, nope. And they say, okay, well, did you bring the manual in so we can look at the manual and we can see the part and we can give you the correct spark plug? And you go, oh, man, nope. And they say, well, how am I supposed to know? And you say, well, you're the parts guy. You tell me. And they say, oh, right. Okay, what is it? And you say, well, it's a Briggs & Stratton 190cc vertical shaft because it's vertical. It's not like the horizon, like an like a edger or something. It's a vertical shaft. goes up and down. Four-stroke motor. And they're going to ask you one simple question. Is it overhead valve or not? OHV, overhead valve. That's all you need to know. It sure is. And they're going to go, okay, then you need the big one. If it's not overhead valve, if it's a flathead, then it's going to use the small spark plug. That's all you need to know. So there it is. Briggs and Stratton 491055T, as in Tango. $3.16 with tax nice uh it's probably already gapped uh and we're going to talk about that in a second here's the washer make sure you have your little heat shield washer there and because if not you're going to over tighten it in and this could make contact with the piston so make sure you got your spacers here or whatever you want to call it make sure that's there okay you got your little thing there that's screwed on nice everything's perfect you got yourself a nice brand new spark plug let's take out the old spark plug this one happens to take the spark plug adapter socket that came in my nifty little toolkit. Some don't. This is a 5 8 deep well. Okay, so that's all you really need to know. Now, I already broke torque on this once, um, so I'm not going to lie to you. But all you got to do is reach in here, wiggle the boot off. There goes your spark plug boot. Get that up out of your way. Reach in with your tool. Line it up. And break torque on it. Once you get it loose enough, then just pull it on out. A couple things that you're going to notice right away. The color and the condition of the electrode. And I'll show you that. Oof, look at that, huh? That is, that's got a lot of carbon buildup. A lot of, like possibly some oil slipping through the rings. That's okay. Mower's still running fine. Ain't smoking like a champ, so we're good. Um, but here you go. Close up view, maybe. Gaps look about the same. We're going to talk about that in just a second. Um, but I don't know if you can see how it's worn down in there 
where the spark goes right between the two it's kind of worn down compared to this new one this new one's much taller and it's going to give you and I, what I'm talking about is right that little nipple that's sticking up not the curve right below it that's what makes the spark between that this grounding to the block being threaded in grounds it to the block and then that is your positive so you got your negative hook and your positive there and that makes your spark um, that nipple is much stronger much taller than this nipple and the reason that the thing about that is um, this is going to provide you a better spark uh, it's just you know these start to wear down and also you'll find that these start to wear down too the hook will start to wear down um, so eventually you just get yourself a new spark plug all right um, that still worked but you know uh, we're doing a tune-up so I'm gonna put the new one in but this spark plug actually did this still work now one thing I want you guys to pay attention to when you take out your old spark plug and you got your new spark plug do line it up line it up make sure that they're the same length beyond the heat shield here this this little heat um, I don't know why I keep calling it a heat shield these these spacers this I think it's something to do with the heat with the heat but this spacer and this spacer on the threads line that up don't line it up this way don't line it up that way make sure at a minimum those are lined up and that the spark plug the new spark plug isn't noticeably longer than this spark plug if so it could make contact with your piston so you really need to be careful for that and everything else looks to be the same so I'm pretty confident that they gave me the correct spark plug even though it does have a different number this is a champion uh, RC12YC with the Briggs and Stratton logo this has the Briggs and Stratton logo but it doesn't have the champion uh, part number so really gotta make sure that that's the correct thing gap a lot of people get bent around the axle about gaps okay I'm gonna tell you something I have never ever 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 received a mower an edger or any equipment back ever from a, a repair shop telling me that the gap was wrong and that's why my machine wasn't running right or would not start ever now if it's closed down that's obviously a problem you need to pry that open with a little flat tip screwdriver if it's way extended out that's a problem you need to tap it down and you could do that on a metal ground or you know a metal bench or a concrete uh, ground or a brick or something you can tap it back down maybe you got a vise with like the, the end there for an anvil you can do, 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 do top it down as long as you're in the ballpark like that right out of the box there's no damage to the box you know to the spark plug box put it in it'll work I promise you I have never adjusted a gap not one day in my life unless it was obviously there was a problem um, like if you were to drop the spark plug right now you might need to open the gap back up if it fell directly straight down uh, there will be people that will argue they may leave comments I'm here to tell you I'm not here to argue with anybody I'm just telling you the facts ma'am just the facts ma'am I've never adjusted a gap I've never had an issue because I never adjusted a gap so don't get bent around the axle about it take a look at it does it look like that does your spark plug look like that put it in done line it up be very careful that you're doing it good now if you notice my hand I'm jiggling I'm jiggling my hand as I'm tightening this because I want to make sure that I am correctly on the threads with absolutely no question that it's not being cross threaded if you cross thread your block your engine your spark plug um, mount you're screwed just telling you so be very very careful with threading in your spark plug once you get it hand tight all the way tight grab your socket put it on and give it one little good little love that's about it now one more little that's it that's all you gotta do do not lean on it do not over tighten it just give it nice and snug that's it put your car plug boot back on that is 
two of the three out wait a minute my spark plug boots not lined up correctly you'll know when it goes on because you'll feel a click there we go all right it'll it, you'll feel it like kind of click on as it goes over the first hump here all right now we got clean air we know we got good clean air going into the carburetor we know we got good clean spark now should be going into the cylinder there's one other thing that we need to do and that's going to be make sure we got good clean fuel and so the next video that I'm gonna do is gonna be how to drain your carburetor because you suspect bad gas you're pulling and you're pulling and you're pulling and it's not starting something's going on something ain't right we're gonna do that in the next video this video is done clean air good spark fire it up go to work <laughs>